the question on everybody's minds today is who will win between Niji Sanji and Salentatsuki, or in this case, Doki Bird? We have Legal Mindset here, who went through every single step, making sure to dot his I's and cross his T's, so to speak. He was legal counsel before for a corporation, as far as I know, and he has a lot to say. Let's listen in. A legal nightmare. As corporate counsel, like, you know, I, and people know me from doing uh, representing special districts as well. You know, I did that when I was younger, when I was uh, younger, as a younger attorney in Florida, representing Reedy Creek, which is why I covered the Disney. So issues. he knows what but he's doing. On, I was corporate counsel for a very large corporation. We would never post a notice of contract termination publicly. This, this is insane, right? This goes to her lawyer. This goes to her, right? That's about it. Well, here's the kicker. It didn't even go to her. She did not find out that she was terminated until a friend of hers messaged her and said, hey, you know, what, what's going on? You know, I just got this thing about you getting terminated. And it just, you know, I mean, imagine like finding out that you got fired from somebody messaging you. What they're saying here is, okay, we terminate. That is exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened with Salentatsky slash Doki Bird. And that's the big issue. I'm going to summarize due to breaches of essentially their rules, right? Of their policies. And that would amount to breach of contract. Now, that is something I'm generally familiar because breach of contract is, is, uh, is fairly international, right? The rules regarding a lot of other different types of law, criminal law, uh, even certain types of civil law are different. But breach of contract is actually one of the things that's pretty international. And just so you guys know, because one of the big issues is venue, 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 venue. With breach of contract, typically you look at where the defendant's headquarters is, where their place of business is, and also if it's stipulated in the contract or stipulated anywhere else or wherever the work is primarily taking place, which clearly would be Japan. So for the breach of contract claim, the venue would, would definitely be Japan. But that does not preclude Selen slash Doki Bird from bringing other claims in Canada that are not available in Japan. But that's what I've been saying before, that she can absolutely bring things in Canada. I think it's Pipeta or something like that is the HIPAA type of regulation that Canada has that she can actually use against them. But yeah, she would absolutely have to go into Japanese court, which is uh, kind of one-sided. It seems like it seems like cited a little bit more towards corporations. So it's kind of harder to do it over there. And the fact that she's, she's a foreigner makes it harder on her Even as well. here, guys, what they've said is already pretty defamatory if it's not true. And there's some of this that even with what we've, the, the facts that I've seen so far, appears may not be true, right? So, and, and once again, guys, a lot of, I know a lot of what's out there is like speculation, right, Gator? Um, right. Certainly there's a ton of speculation out, but it seems like if we talk about the this line here, which I would be concerned with, <clears throat> infringement on third party property rights. My understanding, Gator, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that she, in reality, did not violate anybody's copyright or IP laws, that, that she had permissions for everything that she did. Right. She, she even reached out to the original author of the song that she used, Lily Pichu, and got her explicit permission and was actually working behind the scenes trying to get management to just kind of give the okay and reach out to these people. They didn't do it. So on her own behalf, she went and talked to these people and got the permission to use all of the assets, to use all of the art, to use the song. Factually. So that's what we know about now. We know that that's exactly what she did. She went, she got permissions from Lily Pichu, from the producer, from the people who created the music and did everything. And then she, you know, was like, here, I did this for you. I did your work for you. Please, can you accept this? And the they information they're talking is information that was exchanged between lawyers into the company. There was no threat of doxing. There was no threat of public exposure. And of course, this is talking about the famous, now famous, infamous, uh, Illyra, Vox, and Ike uh, video. Right. There was no, as far as we know, right. I've not seen any proof of that at all whatsoever. Right. Um, at all. If anything, uh, I think probably Selen has more reason to be worried about doxing than the Niji Sanji, uh, livers, like these three, uh, Niji Sanji livers, because they clearly don't give a shit about personal information. They're just passing it around and not really caring who they get, who they give it to. If she has emails, text for you. That's the thing. It, it's Niji Sanji didn't seem to care of who they were giving the information to. They said pretty much in their response that they could give the information to whoever they wanted within the organization. Almost pretty much is what they were saying. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but that's what I understood. Yeah, and we'll see that come out if there's a case, obviously. There's reasons why you don't drop all the evidence in public. Niji Sanji's actually fucking up by self-reporting, by self-snitching, right? They should not be doing this. The fact they're doing this is just, like, mind-boggling. Uh, because her lawyer. And that is from a lawyer's point of view. A lawyer says it's mind-boggling that they would actually self-report this way. 
But even as a layman over here, it was mind-boggling that they were putting all this stuff out when I thought all of this was supposed to be between legal counsel. Or a chance to look over that and maybe possibly come up with a defense for it. Exactly. Selling's lawyer can just build the case, right? Or lawyers, because I think she should have a Canadian lawyer and a Japanese lawyer. Selling, and Doki Bird, if you're listening, lawyer up in Japan and in Canada. Jeff Balthazar says, the thing that bothers me the most about this is the whole message doesn't feel like it was lawyer approved. It feels unrehearsed and unvetted. That black message was definitely lawyer reviewed. I just think... Oh, okay. That's something I did not think. I did not think that it was lawyer reviewed or vetted, but he knows a lot more because he's actually been a counsel for a but corporation. Their lawyers are not that great. They're like the Disney lawyers, right? And I know this is something that the Niji Sanji defenders say. They say, oh, well, Niji Sanji is a, def is a company with lawyers, so therefore they're perfect. Wrong. I was a corporate lawyer. I can tell you right now, corporate lawyers are not Laffy Taffy. They 100% can f up and sometimes they don't know what they're talking about at all. They've sat on their laurels having to do nothing. This is the biggest thing the Niji Sanji lawyers have handled ever. They probably have no scope of reference for this. This is their Titanic. They have no precedent for it. Don't pretend they know what they're doing. They're all panicking just like everybody else. Right. Donald Gills, it would yeah, settle I the agree. day they, want, they do not want to discover. Yeah, and, and they would try to. And, I, and by the way, I'm sure Doki would want to settle. I'm sure Doki would want to settle and get this done. I mean, it's probably going to be easier for her if she wants, if she settles. She herself said that she doesn't want any extra stuff going on. She doesn't want all of this. She didn't want this to continue to be the way that it is. She thought everything was going to quiet down. That's why she she didn't say anything extra. That's why she, she didn't bring out the uh, statement that she put out. She wanted this to be done. But like he said, the lawyers of Nidhi Sanji seem to be like Disney lawyers. They seem to be like just, I don't know, not not as good as they should be. Not as good as the money that they're probably being paid for. It just, even as a layman, it seems like these guys are just making rookie mistakes. Mistakes that I wouldn't make as an indie. Right. Um, is, if, it, if it survived a motion to dismiss, I think they would just pay out. It'd be better for the corporation to be smarter. If I was their corporate attorney, I'd tell them just to pay her. My pay guess is what would happen is they would they would try to settle and have both sides issue some sort of public statement like, the matter yes. is handled, please you know, leave people alone. With an NDA. Something like that. Probably. With an NDA, so yeah. they can't yeah, probably. talk about it. So, regarding a recording, this was not intended to be anything other than a distribution test for a planning of a collaborative event between two people, which happened to be left over from one test recording. I never recorded any other conversations with anyone. So it wasn't even she didn't even record it in bad faith but regardless it doesn't matter it's one party consent so fuck off right she has the right to do it yeah in canada it's one party consent so in her country where she lives in canada she does not need to get the consent of the other party as long as she knows that she's recording and one person knows that they're recording it's, it's legal so, right yeah. i've asked my lawyer to convey that and communication that the document as it was written, wasn't going to be released anywhere. And my lawyer did so when sending the document. Okay, I've got concerns here, guys. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is me being really fucking honest. I have some concerns about her lawyer, okay? Here's my concern. Reading this as a lawyer, right? He did. He could have offered to make a summary. He could have offered to make points. He could have offered to have a version that he could have done that removed a lot of private information that would hurt Doki. He could have protected her better there, I think, as a lawyer, right? That is something that I did not think of. I, since I don't know anything about lawyers, that does make sense. They could have done things to protect her if it was just going to be a communication between lawyers and not necessarily an actual lawsuit. And and not knowing that there's a potential for disclosure and not telling her that we can give it to the lawyers. Because look, a job of a lawyer, what I do as a lawyer is I disclose all of the possibilities, okay? I, I think what he may not have done here is number one, told her this could be disclosed because it could, right? And to lie, and to, to, to pretend that it couldn't. She, you, you have to say there's a potential chance. And beyond that, change the information, alter the information, summarize the information, uh, just a little bit better. I'm not saying that he's incompetent. I'm just saying that maybe he could have done better, okay? That's me being harsh on Doki's lawyer. That's not Doki's fault, lawyer, right? Lawyer of Doki. This case does give a foothold. So yeah, it there are mistakes. There were mistakes on both sides, pretty However, much. However, it's regarding an arbitration clause, not regarding an employment contract and the choice of venue and employment contract. So there's a difference between arbitration and litigation. Arbitration is a different process. It's a different procedure. So the courts could it distinguish is. this it really and say, is. no, this is a choice of law issue. It's not involving arbitration. It's involving litigation. And where's the litigation area? But at the same time, if they wanted to extend this case, if they want to say, no, 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 no. We're going to apply this because we're going to look at this case and we're going to look at it and say, Doki Bird does not have that much money to go to Japan. She doesn't have the resources to go. She doesn't have the hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to Japan. We might find the provisions that might require her to go there as unconscionable and allow her to bring her case in Canadian court under Canadian labor law. Uh, so what is personal information? That is something I didn't know. So there's a possibility she can try to say this is going to be unduly taxing on me on my finances, on me as a person, and but I still want to do this so they can possibly try to bring it 
into the Canadian court. I didn't know that. So let's look at the scope of what personal information is and why they're screwed. Under Papeda, personal information includes any factual or subjective information, recorded or not, about an identifiable individual. This includes in any form, age, name, guys, name. It includes name. So if they have her real name, her doc's name, that would be a violation if she did not willingly give that to them. Which it's really strong. And I love that it's this strong. This is like super duper strong. Not of Papeda. Their Canadian ID number, their income, the amount they make, their ethnic origin. Look at this, blood type. Blood type, guess what they turned over to Niji Sanji? Guess what they turned over? Medical records. They turned over her hospital information. Guess what that probably has on it? Blood type, probably has blood type. So if that was disclosed, there might be some issues there, Niji. You might. That's what a lot of people were telling me. A lot of you guys, every single one of you was like, Pepeda, 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 she can get in big trouble. I said the same thing that, that Niji Sanji could get in big trouble because even the United States has HIPAA, which involves any kind of stuff like that. Diagnosis, any of that gets shown to so, any party other than the ones that you specifically name. Happy they're in trouble. Pepeda over here. Best be careful. Opinions, evaluations, comments, social status, and disciplinary actions. So if she included information about disciplinary actions that she faced and let's say that she faced discipline from alira let's say alira was mean to her but ike didn't know about that and ike got that information violation of an EGL. employee file and remember if you remember vox was releasing information about saying that she had been warned many times before by management they released that information against Pepeda because he mentioned in that if i am not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong in the comments down below that she had been uh, marked by management and had been warned by management many times before. Credit records, loan records, medical records, medical records. Uh-oh, that's what she sent over. Existence of a dispute between a consumer and a merchant. Intentions, such as attempt to acquire goods and services. How about the all the uh, intentions to create her products, to pay her suppliers? This is all Papeda stuff. Papeda does not specify the minimum level of connection that a company must have with Canada in order to be subject to its provisions. Let me read that again. Papeda does not have a minimum connection with Canada. There's no requirement of a minimum connection. There's no language which limits its application to business with a physical presence in Canada, nor are its provisions explicitly limited to personal information collection, use, or distribution solely occurring within Canada. Furthermore, the Act of Parliament was intended to protect personal information in cyberspace and e-commerce. Commerce. Got him. Got him, baby. With Pepeda, you got him. E-commerce. That's what she was. You could say that she was doing that because she was in Canada as she was working with a Japanese company. They're still under Pepeda, according to this law. It, Canada really wanted to protect uh, the consumer, the Canadian uh, This worker. is exactly what the intention of the legislation was. Therefore, this is the highlight. It is likely a foreign company operating only marginally in Canada, for example, by hosting a website available to Canadian citizens or entities will be subject to Papeda. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. Japan does not have the privacy yeah. law. They don't have a claim. And if a jurisdiction does not have a claim, uh, like they don't have that cause of action, the only venue is Canada. The only venue for the privacy claim is Canada. Because the thing is, is her contract is presumably governed by JP law. How would she bring in and enforce a Canadian judgment on Niji Sanji? That's what they he's responding to. don't have that claim in Japan. Now, Japan, Canada, and every civilized country that isn't running on sticks and rocks right has breach of contract every country that has electricity yeah. and isn't in the middle of a civil war has breach of contract claims you can bring that in any country but when you're getting down to specific stuff like that that's a cause of action that has to go in canada now vice versa if you're bringing a uh, ip infringement for moral rights under japanese copyright law or japanese defamation law that's unique to japan you'd have to bring that in japan that's a unique jurisdiction for that does graduation notice fall under pippa um no I think that's something that they would mutually agree upon. If it's information you yeah. agree to release, that's not Papeda, right? So if it's something that you both yeah, agree to Papeda. release because you're graduating, that's not Papeda. And these are all of these posts from uh, 39 DAF, right? And there's so many of them. But the ones I'm going on to, to 39 here, DAF, she's a person who has been on Kill Conical streams, uh, who's now graduated. Uh, she was on, uh, I think, Elira's or Enna's streams as well. She was on a bunch of other people's streams. She's basically a Nidhi Sanji orbiter, Nidhi Sanji out. legal comments. Right, because there's some legal comments in here that are just so wrong that I cannot not refute them because they're so bad, it's ridiculous. She talks about 
okay, she's talking about the three people volunteered, said they disagree with comments, assume each person got different documents. Well, no, they, I mean, Vox said he reviewed everything. So he got most yeah, of the documents, exactly. it seems like. She goes, the tweets Niji said, because if you want to sue for harassment, you already built a case and have documented proof of this exact harassment from specific people. Not true, not true. That, if you are that's suing exactly for what harassment, I said. you can get discovery. In lawsuits, there's something called discovery. Discovery is when you subpoena, when you deposition, when you request information, you get emails, you get text messages, you get all that goodies, all those good DMs. By the way, your Discord can probably be a record as well, particularly if it's public. And this, that's the one thing I would warn you guys is that increasingly social media, other stuff is becoming used in court. Uh, the standards are becoming more and more and more and more open towards the entry of social media. So just understand that. Be very, very careful. Always be careful wherever you are. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law by people. Public. This part here is such a dumb take. You have to build a case already. Wrong, dumb, wrong. Am I wrong for assuming if you sue for harassment, you need to name them for the case and have the burden of proof to support said case? Okay, so the plaintiff does have a burden of proof and yes, he would have to use the real name. That's true. However, you could sue the company. You don't have to sue the individual VTubers. So it is possible, ah, okay. it is possible to sue Niji Sanji without exposing the VTubers. It's possible, but they would, it would probably come up eventually. In all likelihood, it would come up eventually. Right? And you could always focus on who did the harassment and just not dox everybody. If they didn't harass you or they weren't subject to that, you could just leave them out. You could leave their identity um, anonymous. Right? Absolutely. And that's what a lot of people do. They just name the people who were actually right, hurting them. That's totally fine. If, if they're not involved in the harassment. And the implications that EG isn't lying is really bad. The three talents came out in a video addressing the claims. The person uh, suing, there's nobody suing. There's nobody suing. There's no lawsuit. Guys, there's no lawsuit. There's no physical lawsuit. That's another thing that I said. There's no actual lawsuit. As far as we know, nothing has been put in court as far as we know. So this, I'm yeah. Take 39 IQ take right there. When they themselves were specifically named the person suing, nobody 39 suing. IQ take. That's wrong. Right? People just seem to be taking over everything that said face value for the person suing and not considering anything Niji says. No, we're actually, no, actually that's not true. I'm considering what Vox said was true. I'm considering that what Vox said was 100% true, that he reviewed all the articles. I actually believe that he did that. Uh, does it make no sense that Niji because Niji Sanji's that bad that they probably gave him all the articles, Niji to be honest with you. be allowed to show documents to their talents when it is definitely applied to individuals when the company would be named? Yes. Uh, in America, if something was deemed between lawyers, the ethical, you know, responsibility would be to keep it between lawyers. It's like attorney-client work product, right? Or if there's a confidentiality agreement, yes, you could keep it out of the hands of the people in the company. That is possible. Uh, I think it'll be dropped because I don't I think the case is strong enough to warrant this much pushback from Niji and Livers. Um, that's actually a sign the case is strong. If there's pushback, then it's a strong case. If they don't push back, it's a bullshit case. That is, that is, hearing that from a lawyer, that makes a lot of sense. Because if they're scared of actually getting hurt in a lawsuit, of actually getting, losing in a lawsuit, then they're gonna, they're gonna kick and scream and everything and, until they're actually brought to a settlement or a judgment. That makes uh, sense. Now Niji has proof of what she claimed was harassment, which I assume she didn't know would be shared because she, didn't think the individuals would be notified that uh, she made each person a unique doc documenting said harassment. She doesn't know that. That's speculative. He knows nothing about what was made or not Very made. Speculative. Nobody knows except for the lawyers and Niji Sanji. Unless, unless Niji Sanji is leaking the 39 DAF, which by the way, could be a violation in and of itself. Could be a Yeah, if she somehow got those documents, she somehow got some any of those documents, Oh boy, Niji Sanji has got themselves into even, even more trouble. Cause that is, they, they can't claim intercompany communication like they did in their in their statement that's an outside party Order violation particularly of canadian privacy law so i don't know where 39 daf is but you know wherever she's at i hope it's not canada uh doki is suing niji sanji and individuals within niji sanji for no she's not there's no suit file and had documents detailing proof of harassment there's no there's nothing filed there's no lawsuit a threat of a lawsuit is not a lawsuit exactly she's canadian? is she canadian exactly oh big l big l in la Oh yeah, well I know. <laughs> okay, I know the Canadian LA type. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, that that that's a that's a big L. That's a big L for her talking about this, right? And if she's got these, so she can actually get legally uh, sued by Doki Bird for saying these things if she got that information that she's not supposed to be getting because it's all supposed to be between lawyer and lawyer and it's supposed to be private within that organization, not going Document outside. Is, now it seems to me like, what do you know? What do you know? What does she know? I want to know. Th this isn't English, by the way. This is me trying to translate from 39 IQ to English. Uh, she says right here, me 39 IQ, that's Lighters funny. Means jack shit in the court of law. It might, it might, Def, it might if they leaked information. You look at this quote from her. Let me, let me zoom in here. You see? Yeah, if they leaked information to you, it matters a yeah, lot. Guys, it really does. Me being friends with Niji Livers means jack shit in a court of law. It might, if they passed you information, 
if you are being an agent for Niji Sanji to break confidentiality, it might, to disseminate public, uh, private information, it might. I would be very careful. Now, I'm not saying whether she's done that yet or not, but I think that she's implying a lot here. I hope she does not put out further information. I hope she's very careful about what she says, um, you know, here in the future. And that is it. Yes, she does have to be extremely careful what she says in the future. She has to be extremely careful what she puts out there because she is putting herself at risk, like he's saying, putting herself at risk of actually getting herself in trouble. Because if Niji Sanji disseminated some non-disclosable what you know information that shouldn't have been disclosed, some private information, Niji Sanji's in trouble, but her especially being a Canadian citizen, if she's in Canada, she's in even deeper trouble of privacy laws because she received private information, private identifiable information, and she can get paid at the very least. Other privacy laws, from what this lawyer is saying, I trust him. He seems to, to be very balanced in everything, in the way he said everything. So I truly believe 39 DAF shouldn't have said anything. That I agree with what he's saying about, you know, there is nothing out there yet. No lawsuit yet. Who knows if, if she'll be able to do it, if she wants to do it. He had put out there a number of around maybe 500K if she wanted to do it in Japan. If she wanted to stay in Canada, it might be less because, you know, it's it's within her jurisdiction. If it is 500K, as some people have said, uh, she could easily crowdfund it if she really wanted to because the community is definitely going to support that. And... If Niji Sanji is scurrying because they see that they are guilty in some things, that that is interesting. That is very telling. Of course, we don't know one way or the other. We just know based on the information that was given by Niji Sanji and by, by Doki Bird. I leave it all to you to make your decision. This is once again the Mad Salvi saying I will see you guys next time. Of course, have your comments uh, down below for anything and everything that you may think of mentioning to me, whether you think this was too long, too short. You know, you want more information, you want me to do more of these, whatever you want to do, let me know down below. In the description is the Discord server. I'd be happy if you join it. It's a nice, chill place. I want to keep it that way. Keep it nice and chill for you guys. Uh, my Twitter, you know, this channel itself, everything. I thank you guys for being here. I'm going to put on a, another video right here to let you know uh, what else you can watch. Maybe you'll enjoy it as well. Have a wonderful evening, day, afternoon, whichever one it is while you're watching this. I appreciate you all so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.